Today, we will go over some common guest access capabilities provided within Pulse Policy Secure. First, we've simplified guest access, providing self-registration and giving the administrators the ability to customize and brand the web pages. We've also simplified sponsor-based guest management by providing a user-friendly guest management portal for providing guest user accounts. This is purpose-built for receptionists and other non-technical users. We've simplified and reduced administrative burdens, providing deployment wizards and predefined configurations, bulk account creation for large meetings and events, and allowing for control over maximum duration of guest access. Guests are welcome to the network. Our guest solution sends the guest user credentials via email or text message. No vendor lock-in. Pulse Policy Secure is vendor agnostic. We support a wide variety of third-party hardware. Let's talk about sponsored-based guest access. This enables sponsors to approve or deny guest users or contractors. Guest users self-register using their personal information. After completing the self-registration form, the user's access request is sent to their sponsor. The sponsor receives an email or an SMS with a link to the sponsor portal. When they log in, they may approve or deny the guest access request. This process securely allocates appropriate network and resource access by validating guest users or contractors based on their sponsor's approval. Next, let's discuss access compliance support. During web-based sign-in, Pulse Policy Secure may perform a compliance check. This compliance check improves security by ensuring security applications like antivirus and firewalls are running and up to date. This check is done pre and post admission. Okay, it's time for a brief demonstration of our guest access features. We will start with the sponsored guest access workflow. This includes the self-registration user experience the sponsored approval experience, and a quick look at the administrative side, including access controls. Moving on to compliance checking, this feature is most commonly applied to long-term contractors or BYOD users. In other words, employees bringing their own device. We will demonstrate both pre and post compliance checking. And as with the sponsored guest use case, we will review the admin UI, including access controls. Finally, the bonus use case, anonymous authentication. What is this and where would we use it? We will start by opening up the browser on the guest endpoint. The browser is redirected to the guest portal. Redirection is done via one of many of our third-party hardware integrations mentioned earlier. In this specific case, we are being redirected by the Junos firewall. We have customized this portal to highlight our browser-based access capabilities. From the portal, we will click on the Sponsored Guest button to begin the registration process. From the sign-on screen, we'll select the Register as Guest link. This will bring us to the registration page. OK, let's register as a guest. Once complete, a pop-up will appear, the username and password. This information will be auto-populated into the browser's sign-on credential fields. But because this user has not yet been approved, these credentials would fail if tried. The guest information would be forwarded at this point by an email or SMS to the sponsor. In our demo environment, this is not configured. We will be using the browser's bookmark that represents the link that would be sent via the email or SMS. Logging on as the sponsor, we need to approve the guest request. This is done by editing the user entry by selecting Enable, then Saving Changes. Upon saving this edit, the sponsor will be prompted to communicate the status change to the guest. Optionally, the sponsor can change the password. Again, upon saving this edit, the sponsor will be prompted to communicate the status change to the guest. Once all changes have been made, the sponsor may log out. 
Once the user has been informed of their approval and new password, they may log into the guest portal and will be given access predetermined appropriate for the guests by the system administrator. Let's take a quick look at the administrative web UI, specifically the users and their roles. Based on the roles, we can learn what access has been pre-configured for the guest user role. This configuration can be found under the Resource Access Policies section within Pulse Policy Secure. Each policy is mapped to one or more roles. This concludes the Sponsored Guest Access portion of the demo. Next, we're going to cover compliance checking. For time's sake, in this demonstration, both contractor and BYOD use cases leverage the same compliance checks and access controls. In a real-world production environment, it would be easy to differentiate compliance and access control between these two roles as needed. For this demonstration, we will log in as the contractor. Initially, this endpoint will be compliant, passing the host check. We are looking for a supported running antivirus and that the endpoint is not running a blacklisted application. In this case, we're using Notepad for that. Okay, now let's run a couple of separate pings, one to an internal service and the other to an external service. This will represent some very basic access control. Now we'll open our blacklisted application and see what happens. Within a few seconds, compliance failure will be discovered and the new access control policy will be applied. As you can see, our external service is no longer available. Back to the admin UI, we can take a look at the active users to reveal the contractor's current user role and the respective resource access policies. As you can see, the contractor is currently in the remediation role. As the endpoint has failed, the blacklisted application's compliance check. And as we review the resource access policies, we can identify the ones which apply to the remediation role. This concludes the compliance portion of our demonstration. Now we'll move on to the bonus use case, anonymous authentication. This will be quick. Basically from the user's point of view, our demo endpoint, when attempting to gain access to a public network, like a cafe, hotel, or airport, they are redirected to a portal. The sole purpose of this portal is to present a terms of use. The user is expected to agree to the terms of use, generally by clicking on a button that says something like, I agree. In our case, anonymous guest. Once this agreement has been confirmed, the endpoint will be given access to the network. So, what does this look like from the admin UI? As you can see in the active users list, this user is identified by a unique anonymous username and is assigned to the role of anonymous. Reviewing the resource access policy, we can see the anonymous user role is limited to web access only. This concludes both our bonus use case and our greater guest access demonstration. Thank you for your time and for further information, please visit our website at www.pulsesecure.net. Thank you.